The Eagles backfield has come under plenty of criticism this season so far and to make matters worse the injury bug has sunk its teeth so far into the team's veins that there isn't much blood left to come out. However in a very dark room there is a small light that's starting to shine and that's coming from undrafted free agent Josh Adams. The 6 foot 2, 225 pound running back out of Notre Dame has 154 yards on the season and is averaging 6.7 yards per carry. The problem is that the Eagles aren't really using him that much and after an off season where he battled injury problems and struggled to take advantage of what was a wide open opportunity, he's now having to gain all of that back in a season where the team aren't running the ball anywhere near as frequently as they did the year before. So can Josh Adams save the Eagles backfield or is this a lost cause for 2018? My name is Liam Jenkins and this is an episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of our new subscribers. We're at 4,000. We would love to hit 5,000 by Christmas. So if you like what we do, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. And don't forget, we have daily Philadelphia sports articles from myself and our team of writers over at phillysportsnetwork.com. Let's be honest here, since the injuries began to weaken this unit, a decimated corpse has hardly been capitalised on by Wendell Smallwood or Corey Clement, but somehow Josh Adams can walk into a game against Jacksonville and put up statistical brilliant. He can then do the same against Dallas where he averages just 0.1 less of a carry and get 47 yards on the night. So what does Adams do differently than Smallwood or Clement? The answer is simple, he's easily the biggest, most brutish back on the roster and although he's not the most agile, he's one one cut instinct makes him a great asset for the offense that the Eagles run. What he loves to do most is find the alley and what I mean by that is slip between his blocks, turn up field and really love initiating contact with opposing defenders. He's not opposed to a stiff arm, he loves getting physical but more importantly he loves turning east and west into north and south. He's not a combo runner, he's not a guy that's going to be shifty or be making the Sean McCoy type moves all over the place but what he is is extremely efficient. We'll see an example of that here on this great run against the Colts in week three. It's a counter move, a one cut back who can shift his body weight before he gets up to speed. Now that's not a knock on Smallwood or Clement, but I feel that they both try to do too much with the ball or jump at the first window they see. For Adams, who's built like a linebacker, to move the way he does there, make that cut and turn up field is scarily impressive. He then makes a defender miss and turns up again. The only downside to this is that when he's actually at full speed, turning and changing direction is a whole different ball game. But with this offensive line blocking for him, he doesn't really need to worry about that as long as he's getting upfield. That initial burst out of the backfield, his ability to make a quick decision, is what really sets him apart from Smallwood and Clement who, as I said before, just try to do too much. They either run into a brick wall or they panic and they wait and wait for a hole that never opens. Adams makes a decision, sticks to it, and then uses his big frame to punish any defender that stands in his way. We see another example of that here against the Jags. He makes a defender miss, turns his body outside and uses his inside arm to try and stiff arm the defender. Now I think he actually goes over the helmet of Jalen Ramsey but if we use the view from behind you really appreciate the anticipation that Josh Adams has as opposed to the more experienced backs on the team. Wentz hands his ball off and the moment Adams picks it up his head's up he plants that foot. He's got his eyes on his right tackle Halapula Vati Vitae, shreds inside following his block and that is a huge play that it all comes down from that anticipation. Yes Adams can move his body quickly as a one cut back but there's no point in being able to cut into a different direction if you don't know where you're going. And Adams is decisive in his runs. He knows exactly where his blocks are going to be and he'll be patient and wait for the alley to open up before turning upfield. We see a great example here against the Cowboys in their most recent loss on Sunday. And it may sound silly because that's the logical thing to do for a running back but the thing is that it's so easy when the ball is in your hands to try and want to do more with it. To think you see an alley when you don't. To think you see an opening that's not there. Adams is got that mentality, that processing speed that's really needed to excel at this position and if he reminds me of any running back I have to say Latavius Murray. The way he runs, he's a very physical guy, he thinks about a cut then, shifts his body weight back outside knowing Vitae can get a chip and then pushes up forward. That would have turned a dead play 
into a short gain just by being aware. And again, that's more than can be said for some backs in this stable. But this may actually be my favourite run that we've seen from Adam so far. It was against the Jags in London. And you'll see the way that he's able to make that decision, snap decision, to cut the ball inside. The Jags have an astout run defence. We know that. We've seen what they can do throughout the last couple of years. But watch the way Adams takes that ball and cuts back outside. At that point, that's a dead play for Clement and Smallwood, I truly believe. But he's able to push that weight with such thrust and such burst that it jumps him out of what could be a dead pile. And at Notre Dame, he had one of the best offensive lines in the country. And it's easy to see that with blocking like that, that gives him time to make that decision, that he was able to break out for seven touchdown runs of over 79 yards. That's a monumental statistic. And one that when you see the play like this, the ability to read the situation and turn his body weight upfield. He's a big guy. The man is literally just a bowling ball and if you can find an alley, if you can find a route to hit a strike, he's going to hit it 10 times out of 10. He's going to turn upfield, let his body weight do the talking and use that physicality to push through and this is what we saw throughout the season. He was given an opportunity in week 3 and smashed it and if we look at his statistics at this point he is averaging 5.7 yards per carry on 27 carries for 154 yards. Jay Ajayi had 45 for 184 averaging 4.1 in fact, Adams has more runs of over 10 yards than Jay Ajayi did on less carries. But for some reason, the Eagles aren't giving him the snap counts he deserves. And is this a durability thing? Of course, there was an injury concern coming out of college. It did rear its ugly head during the preseason. But I think at this stage, Adams is proving what he needs to. I won't understand how in a one possession loss to Dallas, when at most you're down by 13, you run the ball 16 times and pass 44. There's no need for it, especially when Adams even in that game, was still putting in a solid. The only time there was a problem with Adams running the ball was when they broke him off for a huge run and then on the next fourth down, on a fourth and one, just slotted him into the game and it was so obvious what the Eagles were trying to do, there was no wonder that it didn't really work. The only concern I really have is getting him down in the red zone because obviously those holes are going to close, the alleys may not be there and as we see against Say, although he's able to find the hole in Dallas, he's not quite able to get to the end zone and I would love to see him score his first touchdown at the NFL level. I I don't think he's going to come inside the 20 because he needs that time to get outside, find the hole and then put on the afterburners. And obviously when you're inside the 20, those windows shrink and it's down to the more agile backs. So I can see Smallwood and Clement maybe taking those red zone opportunities unless they want to barrel the ball down the gut with Josh Adams. But even then, you want him to be in a position where he can read the blocks. Where you're getting screens ahead of him, where you're pulling guards, pulling tackles. That's the sort of impact he has. And who doesn't love a running back that can pass protect as well? That's a great chip block that lands on then Sayamalu's shoulders and enables a completion. And look at the impact on an RPO as well. They fake the handoff, all the defenders fall for it. And unlike Wendell Smallwood, teams are actually packing the box because they fear what he can do. What is the outlook for Josh Adams moving forward? At this point, I don't know. But he's averaging so many more yards per carry than any of the other backs on this roster. He's easily the most efficient back on the roster. And with an already five first downs to his name on 27 carries, I really think they just need to give him more of the ball. If they're going to balance this offense, Adams has to be the guy they go to. Let Smallwood and Clement take care of the versatility and drill in the ball up the gut inside the red zone. But give Adams on those West Coast plays where Smallwood and Clement are trying to do too much. Give it to a man that's experienced at making those reads that is a one cut back, can get and turn up field, find the alley and drive the ball home. Again, if you've liked this episode, guys, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for all your support. We may even have another film room video coming soon. There's plenty more content on this channel on the horizon with some special episodes of different series as well so make sure you stick around and don't forget phillysportsnetwork.com is where you can find all of our content or at liamjenkins21 on twitter from myself liam jenkins we'll see you next time